and good afternoon up on the three here bring another video this time here we are doing another another video on repair this time here we are doing a fuel pump and replacement is a 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix So the fuel pump is, well, basically this is what you have to do. Now you really don't actually have to clean out your trunk area and everything else like that, but I did to make it easier um, for me and something like that, um, because basically the trunk comes down to over here, covers this area right here. So basically I took everything out of it. It makes it a little bit easier for me in just in case if I had any gas spill and everything else like that, it won't spill on the carpet and it'll just spill right in this section over here. So that's the reason why when you pull it out. Okay, as you can see right now, so that this is the part we need to take out. You are using a 10, min 10 millimeter. These to turn easily. Once you've cracked the first one, this is just a cap covering that up. Then from there, you have to pry this up. So let me get a pry tool and I'll be right back with you in a second. All right, so once you do that, just gonna get a pry tool to one side. You wanna pry it up slowly because basically there is a gasket on the bottom of it. You do wanna be very careful prying because you do not wanna mess up this gas that's just down here and everything else like that. And then from there, this is what you will see. And that is your pump. Now it's very dirty down here so that, so what you wanna do is before you do anything else, you wanna get a brush or something like that and brush off all of this stuff. You do not want, or if you have an air tool, I'll be even better to blow it out of here cause you do not want this to fall down into your tank. So we'll be right back and we'll get an air tool. All right, this is how it should look before you actually go any deeper than this. As you can see, I've fairly blew it off Got most of it out of there and everything else to that. So then from there, let's see, it's all right. Connections here, 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 and here. Now these are snap-in connections, meaning that if you pry down right here, you will get them off. So once these are off, I'll show you what to do next. All right, now, there's gonna be three of these hoses. This hose here, you wanna take off first. They have two squeeze connections. You wanna squeeze this in from this side and this side, then push that one out. This one here, the lock ring, actually you squeeze these two sections together, that'll squeeze out. This one here is the hardest, because the way the lip is. You wanna squeeze right here. If you have a dental pick or anything else like that, I am using an Allen wrench. You just scoop it up from the bottom, like this, and then you can literally press it in from this side underneath the bottom, then push out, then it'll pop out. Now. That'll get your hoses free and everything else like that. So yeah, part of the problem done. Do not let these hoses fall because they are bare to get back out. The other places right here, well, it's simply a friction fit. You take off this connection here. Oh, primary thing, and I'll put this in the description at the beginning, um, that you disconnect the battery cables first and foremost. That's the number one thing you do. I forgot to put it in the description because I was I started recording after I had already did that. Because I know already know to do that. But everybody else, I'll put in a little thing right here before the video starts that you have to disconnect it first. Next thing, these lines here are the same thing. They are going to want to drop. If you hook one on this right here, that will keep it from dropping. You use one of your connection pieces right here. You throw this on top. Now I've done this before on another vehicle. So I know from experience that thing will fall back there and then from there, well, you're in the tank dropping territory if you can't fish it out any other way. So you definitely want to put it on one of the mount screws so that and put one of the things back on it. That way they, it will not disappear on you. It will not go away. Now, unfortunately my car 
as you already know, has rush issues. Try to get a little closer. Things for that. So, I have rust all along this right here, which is going to be a problem. In the rent mount, earning us that. So, I know I have to spray this with WD 40 before I do anything else. Now, that will actually do two things um, loosening it up so you can actually rotate this thing. And the other thing is that you have to deal with so that is hopefully no sparks. You want to use something that's not going to make a spark. That is a the plan. They do make a tool that you can use that you mount right here and against this that makes you be able to turn this. Don't be tempted to try to put something here because you'll snap off this right here and then you're screwed. Sorry. This right here. A lot of people like to tend, okay, if I put something here and pry against this, if you get into this mount here and break that off, yeah. You're completely and utterly screwed. This, I'm actually see if this one can come off and slide I'm going to reattach this to the new one. If I can, if not, well, I'm going to have to deal with the new one. Then I'll have to splice the connections, which I really rather not do. But I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Once you have the ring free, then from there, you just wiggle. Again, you want to make sure you don't break these off. Because... Oh, no, 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 no. You got to be very careful. You want to wiggle this free. And at this point, you just got to sit there and work it to get this off. Which, of course, doesn't want to come off. But again, you don't want to break anything. gotta get room and this is the part they struggle with you have to sit there and take your time it will come off it just takes a minute sorry my arm was in the way then you get the ring off and you can see like I said mine is a complete and utter rusty mess which I'll have to do something about before I put back on it and then from there now again I can see crud and everything else of that that I see trying to go into the tank once you have that off, you want to slowly, sorry, my camera work is shitty, sorry, slowly rise this out of the tank, then you have to lean it this way, until you have this free, then you want to carefully take it out of the vehicle, and sit on the ground and that's the first part of the equation now again while you've done this you can inspect the tank and it doesn't look too bad inside everything else today nothing very well inside of there you want to get a plastic bag babe go give me that shopping bag right there bag. yeah yeah My, my lovely daughter, my assistant for today. Shake it, yep, shake it again. Thank you. Make sure you wanna, that's it for right now, baby, thank you. You wanna get this plastic bag and put it right there. That's not for anything falling inside the tank. Or if something does fall you again, you wanna hook these to little corners right here if you can, so it doesn't fall away in the tank. But that'll stop anything from falling inside of the tank. Now, at this point, you look at your replacement. And you pray to God that the parts made up exactly the way it did before. Now, of course, I bought Imitex. That's the part number. Oh, actually, let me try to get zoom in on it. It is the E356M fuel pump. That's the item number that I have from Imitex. It's supposed to be the right one and everything else of that. 
we'll take this one off the box. It looks deceiving. Looks may be deceiving, baby. Okay. Yep. Now, let's pull her out. It looks the same. Now, it is the same. you'll see that it already comes with a sending unit already attached to it, which is great. Some of them don't. Yep, Some of them. Angle. Yes, baby, I know. Some of them you actually have to, sorry, for the cam work again. Some of them you actually have to remove, or you gotta put in your old sending unit to put on this one here. Now this sending unit actually looks different. This sending unit here goes across, but it looks virtually the same. Now let's look at our connections. Now the new unit does not come with and they usually don't. They don't come with these clips right here. You have to take these off and put it on the other. Now this is the other thing. You see how this unit is supposed to, look, it's supposed to spring back up. This one doesn't. Look at the new unit. It does. It does. That's part of your problem. Those, those, those strings actually won't, those, those. Okay. Now. I'm just going to get the box out of the way. So. I'm going to pause the video for right now. Oops. Get back to sharpness. And then we'll bring you right back. Alright. So, as you can see here, both of them have the same things with it. Now, this part here. Let me get closer. Is in this one here, but it's slowly up there in a different section. So, they made, I guess, a design improvement. But the problem is. This is the plug here is narrow. The new plugs that they're making for replacement, which they give you a kit for to use, is not narrow. That plug is well wide. And in order for you to do it, you have to make a modification to this. Now, you've seen before, this was sitting right there. But to swing this back over to where it needs to be, it's going to be in the way. So we have to modify that so we can actually get on there and everything, which is the hard part. Now I have two choices. I can delete this off of here or I can change out the top one and put back in the old one. Now that's what I'm doing right now. I'm looking at the modifications that I need to make in order for us to do that. Um, now I'd rather not make modifications in the tank. So I'm not gonna do that but I'm going to change it to, uh, so I'm going to actually remove this right here. Okay, now, as you can see here, I plainly cut off the extra piece right here, so that way when it zips on here, it won't be in the way of the new card, uh, of the new plug, excuse me, so that. And, as you can see, I wire brush the bottom of it, so when it goes on the back onto it, it'll actually be able to sit seal on here better and flatter and it'll make life a hell of a whole lot easier. So, that's part one. And putting it back in is basically is the exact reverse of taking it out. The only thing is you'll have to wire up connections for, again, the new plug. So I'm not gonna show you put me putting it back in and everything else of that. I'll just show you the last part of me connecting this part here, and then we'll call it a day. So see you back in a couple of minutes.